Today, we're raw vlogging it with Thor 2, The Dark World. So I saw Thor 2, The Dark World, and I give it a passing grade. Uh, I, I did enjoy it. Although, I will say that it is a passing grade. It didn't get like an A plus or anything like that. Uh, which is fine. It's a Thor movie. I didn't expect, I, I don't expect Thor to make straight A's in class. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> he's, he's a C student and this is a C movie. And I think that's why it works so well is because it's like, it just, uh, it's, it's meta in a way of like the stories aren't very smart. Thor isn't very smart. So it just kind of works. The main thing that I find really enjoyable about Thor is the fact that uh, there is a lot of fun character interactions, a lot of fun jokes. There's probably a little too many jokes here and there, especially with Kat Denning's character, but uh, I really appreciate that they have those character interactions and that is what makes me interested in the comic books and in, into these characters. And I'm glad that they're realizing that and doing something with it. Uh, you know, my thing about movies is y you need to have either really great plots and stories or you need to have really great characters and character interactions. You gotta have one of those two things, you know? And Thor doesn't really have the plot, but it totally has the character interactions down, which, uh, you know, gives it a passing grade. And if you have both, well. Some believe that before the universe, there was nothing. They're wrong. There was darkness, and it has survived. What's gonna happen? Visually, the movie was spectacular. You could tell that they had a lot better budget this time around because the original Thor movie felt like the cheapest of all the Marvel movies. But now they got some money and you can tell that they really put it to good use. There's really great uh, costuming. There's really great effects going on. You get to see a lot more of Asgard, which was really cool. The movie looked great uh, design wise. Everything was really nice uh, for the most part. All the creatures look pretty good. The costumes, the backgrounds shot well. Also the director, Alan Taylor, I feel did a really good job. The hair this time around was a lot better. Uh, Thor's hair looked really, really good. And Loki's hair looked a lot better because in Avengers 2, he had this weird like Tina Fey flip thing that was like not doing anything for me, but I'm glad they remedied it this time around. The movie has really great pacing. It really moves you along. There's a lot of fun elements that keep you invested. Uh, one of the fun things visually was the black hole grenades that were really cool where they like sucks you into a weird into nothingness. I don't know. I guess it's a gravity bomb. I don't know, but I enjoyed watching that. I like Chris Hemsworth that a shirt on I like that one. Your bravery will not ease your pain. Your family, your world will be extinguished. So now, Let's get into some of my criticisms for Thor 2 The Dark World. Uh, I would have to say my main criticism is that the story is kind of weak. It's very thin. The plot's very thin. There's a lot of mumbo jumbo going on. I feel like the villain is kind of take it or leave it. You know, you're not really emotionally invested in him or his story. He's just kind of there. The plot itself is very thin because it's a very passive plot. You have your characters who are just responding to events that are happening. They're like, oh, we got to go here. And then, oh, we got to go over here now. And then this guy's got this thing. So we got to go over there. There's never really great motivations uh, behind anything that anyone does. So it leaves you with a really weak uh, character connection. Like you're not really connected with like emotionally. You're not really emotionally connected to these characters and being like really blown away when something sad happens. Like spoilers when Thor's mom dies. They try to make Thor's mom's funeral this big to-do when you really don't know her character at all, so you don't really have a reason to feel really sad that she's dead other than the fact that she's just Thor's mom. You only see glimpses of her character and there's no real connection there. So when she dies, you're not moved by it, even though there's all this crazy music, like you should be so sad at this moment and you're just not. But then again, it's Thor, so big deal. One major issue I have uh, is the fact that this movie revolves around this romance between Thor and Jane Foster that really nobody cares about. I don't care about it. I just have a hard time believing that Thor, the God of Thunder, who can have his pick of any of the ladies in the Nine Realms, settles on Jane Foster. Like why? What, like what is she, what, what, why? 
Why? They keep telling me that like they have this big romance, but they never show me why. I, this is the whole problem, okay? Thor is a warrior. He is the god of thunder. Not the god of weak romances with Natalie Portman. I mean, it's like, no. <laughs> like, I wish that they would just let him go be Thor and do fun Thor things instead of trying to tie him down to this boring scientist character. But it just seems like she's more of a tool to keep Thor on Earth to explain why he's on Earth for Avengers 2 more, though, more so than a character that has a true connection with another character. I've never heard anyone say I love Jane Foster's character. She's my favorite character. Nobody says that. It's a fact. I love Jane Foster. <laughs> you know you don't. Natalie Portman has a pretty face and I enjoy looking at it, but I, it's not like I don't like Natalie Portman. I really like Natalie Portman a lot. I think that she did an amazing job in Black Swan. I think she is just beautiful. I could look at her face a lot and not get bored because she has a really pretty face. Um, but that's, that's not enough. You know, that's not enough. I wish that they'd do some more fun things with her character and make her a little more exciting. Although, although I will say that I did appreciate in this film that both of the human women characters, uh, Kat Denning's character and Natalie Portman's character, do have an active role in Thor defeating the villain in the end of the movie. Because if this movie, I feel like this movie was made like 10, 20 years ago, like they both would have just been like, save us Thor, and then that would have been it. But props to them for at least doing something with their female characters. I appreciate that. The number one thing that I like about the movie isn't really the movie itself. It's uh, what Marvel is doing with their cinematic universe. I'm just really like in awe of the craziness that they are really trying to put together. And I'm inspired that it's even working. Like, it's like, wow, you guys are actually making this happen. Good for you. Like, it's really interesting watching them grow the Marvel universe in a cinematic form. There's a scene at the end where they start bringing in the cosmic stuff and, and mixing it with the Asgardian stuff. And I really enjoyed it. I thought it looked really fun and interesting. And uh, I'm it's making me really excited about Guardians of the Galaxy. I was not excited about it at all to begin with. And now I'm, that's the, my most anticipated one. So yeah, it's like big ups to you, Marvel. Like they've really made a plan. They've stuck to it. It's worked. Something that's really interesting about the Marvel Cinematic Universe is its connection to Marvel's Silver Age of Comics, uh, which was kind of like 70s era, 60s, 70s. And a lot of the movies, I feel like, are a really great representation of what the comics were like back then. Uh, a little more simplistic, uh, you know, and then that's fine. There were a lot of fun going on. And it's interesting to see them using a lot of the same tactics that Stan Lee used in the Silver Age to get people excited about Marvel and Marvel characters. And I think that's a really great way to go about it. Like it's a very interesting meta way to look back into your past and say, what worked before? Let's try that again in a whole new er arena of, of movies instead of comics. And to watch it work all over again is, is really kind of, uh, it's interesting. Very self-aware. Marvel's kind of self-aware, which I appreciate in a lot of ways. I really like the energy of this Thor movie, and I feel like it's really going to get a lot of new readers. I think this movie is really going to resonate uh, really well with teenagers and other young people, and I think that's awesome. I'm really excited for anything that gets people excited about Marvel, because uh, we always need new readers. There's always room for one more on the comic book train. It's a fun time. So in conclusion, Thor 2 The Dark World was a really fun banana boat ice cream sundae movie. You should definitely go check it out. I don't hold the Thor movies to a super high standard, so I go in with a, like really no expectations and I feel like I've never been let down. But on the same token, I haven't been offended by anything in the movies either, like say Iron Man 3 where I was just like, why did you do this? Like there, I never have that moment in a Thor movie. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And if you're all in a tizzy over Thor right now and you're all excited after watching the movie, you should definitely check out my review on Marvel Now's Thor God Butcher and God Bomb. It's totally really good, so you should totally read it if you're excited, which you should be. So there. Thor, God of Thunder, here's the scoop.
This unconventional narrative is split between past, present, and future, showing Thor's millennia-long battle against the mysterious entity Gore the God Butcher, who's been busy killing gods all over the universe. One thing that I think is really interesting about this Thor storyline is the very ambitious, non-linear storytelling that's going on. Uh, I don't see a lot of comics where this is happening.